Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. After my short introduction about this forgotten type of automation, let's have a look what we can actually do with it. To open the event editor, I right click in this example the cutoff frequency of Harmer and say Edit Events. First, I like to inform you about a little bug in the event editor and how you can easily work around it. It's not a biggie and happens just in one situation. Just that you know if it should happen to you. In the title bar of the event editor, we've got this little selection menu where you can switch between different parameters if they are already assigned. If I minimize the editor, the menu stays in place. But if I go back, it has disappeared and I can click anywhere, no way to open this drop-down menu. You can bring it back by either closing the window and reopening it, or even faster, just maximize the editor which already brought it back and go back to normal, let it stay in place. In the editor, we've got several tools to our disposal. The handling is a bit cumbersome at the beginning, but once you follow the rules, it's not a problem anymore. First, the pencil or draw mode. Left click and dragging let us draw in automation quantized to the snap settings of the editor. And left clicking makes it a perfect tool for example to set up a sample and hold type of modulation for our target for some kind of controlled randomness. Just left click existing automation again to change its value. <laughs> Right dragging draws a straight line you can adjust by moving the mouse up and down until you release it. And here is already one example what I mean with cumbersome. Because it's nearly impossible to hit the exact first point and there was already an automation value higher than the new entered one, it left us with a little spike at the beginning. This happened because the right click drag method bypasses the snap value and gave us much finer increments. With following the rules I mean that you can avoid the situation easily if you respect this behavior and try to draw the line starting from a point where there's empty space or the starting point is outside my pattern clip boundaries. I undo my changes and try now from the other side. Et voilà. No spikes, no problem at all. Shift left dragging locks the vertical position either for the whole range or just in between when I want to hold a certain value a bit longer. Control left dragging selects time. Control right dragging zooms in to make detailed changes. And the simple control right click zooms out again. Alt left dragging bypasses the snap settings for finer freehand drawing. The brush or paint tool is actually redundant as the draw tool does already everything the paint tool can do. The only difference between them is that the paint tool bypasses the snap settings by default while you have to hold the alt modifier to do the same with the pencil tool. So if you don't like to hold ALT while freehand drawing with snap bypass, this is a tool to use. Delete does what the name suggests. It deletes events. But deleting events does not always work as you might think. If I for example delete something in between, we end up with more of a hold value than zero values one might expect. Event automation is a continuous stream. And deleting events where left and right are values left holds the line until the next event occurs but doesn't set them to zero. But at the very end, it's the same like with automation clips. If I delete this point, it behaves the same like our event automation and doesn't go to zero either. The next tool is called Interpolate and what it does is redrawing existing automation and connecting the different values with a straight line. Just left drag arrange. This is sometimes very handy to make variations to a sample and hold like modulation to let some steps glide to the next value. <laughs> The SELECT tool does of course a time selection. 
and the zoom tool zooms into the range. The last two are a bit redundant as well as the paint tool. All of these actions can be done with just the draw tool, as I have already have shown by holding control and left dragging for selecting and control right dragging for zooming. But it's always nice to have different options. People who like to use less tools but work more with modifiers have an easy way to perform all actions without swapping tools. And people who don't like to use any modifier keys can use the separate tools. All of these tools are available in the Piano Roll editor as well, if you prefer to edit your events in there. Back to our event editor, which has two additional tools available under the wrench icon, or from the menu under Tools. First, Scale Levels. This menu offers us four controls which influence all or a selection of events differently. Tension rescales levels logarithmically, which means a shape like this. Turning this parameter to the left reduces the values in relation to each other, but the left hand side more than the right hand side. Turning it to the right add to the values again at the left hand side more than on the right hand side. The center slider does nothing by itself. It is an offset for the tension, which can give very different and interesting results. Multiply, as the name suggests, multiplies the values by the set percentage up to 200% positive. And for bipolar values like panning, we can flip the automation upside down via the negative values. Finally, offset adds to the values equally in a positive or negative way. The LFO overrides our previous automation entirely. We can create more interesting results by adjusting start and end values differently. We have three different waveforms and the phase setting. The interesting part of the LFO inside the event editor is that it prints the result which can be edited further. This isn't possible in any other place in FL Studio to my knowledge. Similar to the Piano Roll editor, we can import a waveform if we need some visual guideline to sync it to the audio. But this waveform view can only be disabled in the Piano Roll editor of this pattern. The option in the event editor is always grayed out and even the shortcut Alt-N, the manual mentions, doesn't work for me. We can save automation easily load other shapes or just reload the previous one if we made a mistake. This way you can back up something you like and don't want to destroy by further changes or you can build your own library of interesting shapes you can use by drag and drop. If you need to start automating from a certain start value there is a nice function in the edit menu. Set the parameter to the desired starting point Open the editor and go to Edit, Insert Current Controller Value. Now you have an idea where to start and can edit the curve to your liking. By the way, you can left click drag up and down on a certain event to fine tune it. For more precision, just zoom into the event vertically. As already shown a few times, you can turn every event automation into an automation clip with the corresponding command. We can of course cut, copy or paste stuff. Or duplicate. For these actions, there is a very important setting I had turned off all the time, but which is enabled by default. Relocate events. Turn it off if you want to replace the following events by, for example, duplicating a selection. Turn it on if you want to add data by pasting or duplicating. Again, off for replacing. On for adding and shifting the following events to the right. The last option is auto smoothing. 
This option draws smooth curves. With it off, with it on. Looks the same, doesn't it? But now I release the mouse button. Its behavior can be a bit irritating. It performs the smoothing not before you released the mouse. As you hopefully have seen, editing events is quite powerful and with unlimited parameters per pattern, uncluttered playlist and easy copying or duplicating of repetitive automation, it's actually hard to understand why nearly nobody is using it. I think a big reason is a false assumption event automation would be less precise. Since the implementation of automation clips with their precise straight lines, we got easily the feeling that it would be noticeable in a bad way if the less precise event automation has a few bumps or it shows little steps if we take a closer look. But is that really the case? Steppy or unprecise automation is best noticeable with a cutoff automation with high resonance. This is the precise start to end automation with an automation clip. And this is my crappy try to draw this freehand. I'm sorry, I cannot hear any difference, neither any steppiness, nor because it's not following an exact logarithmic curve. I think we are overacting sometimes with the wish to be as precise as possible and oversee the fact that we are humans and not machines. And that quite the opposite, our hearing loves little imperfections, which we often miss by avoiding the previous ways. I can only ask you to give it a fair chance, even if it feels a bit unusual at the beginning. If you then decide you don't have any use for it or it isn't worth the hassle, fine, feel free to make your own choice. But don't make the same mistake like I did and just push it aside without having tried it, just out of prejudice or laziness. Perhaps you will miss a great opportunity you later regret like I do now. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.